Hello and welcome to Court TV News at 4. I am Frank O'Malape. As the multinational offensive continues, President Jonathan predicated that the northeastern state of Yobe, Adamawa, would be clear of Boko Haram territory before the middle of next week. He said he hopes neighboring Morono State, where the group started, will be cleared in the next three weeks. The president made this declaration in an interview with Voice of America in Abuja, where he affirmed that Boko Haram terrorists are being trained alongside ISIS militants. He however declined to mention the name of the countries where the trainings are taking place. Also in the interview, President Jonathan credited both the intervention of Nigeria's neighbors as well as the acquisition of new weapons for turning the tide against the militants. And away from that now, the House of Representatives on Thursday urged the federal government to give a posthumous award to the late wing commander, Chimda Hedima. Chimda was the Air Force pilot who was captured and later killed by insurgents after he crashed his fighter jet into a Boko Haram camp, killing about 63 of them. The lawmakers also called on the Nigerian Air Force to name the brand of aircraft that flew after him. Uh, Simon reports that the motion, which enjoyed unanimous support, was raised by Manuel Jimmy, representing Makodi uh, Guma Federal Constituency. The atmosphere was calm when the motion was read by Emmanuel Jimmy. In a solemn tone, he recalled what happened to the Air Force personnel on September 11, 2014. This house recalls that the late wing commander Edima and his colleague were captured when their plane came down after sustaining gunfire. The East House realizes that Commander Hedima and his colleague opted to inflict maximum damage on the enemy at the risk to their own lives when they could have parachuted from the doomed plane at a time that could have afforded them a likelier chance of avoiding capture but instead chose to fly the plane to a point where it would crash land on the enemy position, thus leaving them no escape route from capture. He also saluted the courage of the officers who sacrificed their lives for the survival of the nation. The speaker, and your colleagues, this house resolves, one, to observe a minute standing ovation for the bravery shown by late Wing Commander Hedima and many other personnel of the armed forces who continue to put their lives in harm's way for the unity of our country. Two, the House mandate the Committee on Defense to liaise with the executive arm of government to ensure that posthumous national awards are given to left Wing Commander Hedima and his colleague for their uncommon acts of bravery and patriotism. Three, this House urged the Nigerian Air Force to name the brand of aircraft flown by late wing commander Hedima after him. The House recalled that the late wing commander and his colleague were captured when they steered their plane deliberately into a Boko Haram camp. I think uh, the, the motion and the prayers are very clear. I will therefore go ahead to put the question, except if there is any member speaking against it. Those in support of this motion, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. The ayes have it. May we rise and observe the minute uh, of um, standing ovation and commendation for the commander. Are you praying? So put your back, cap back. Having paid the supreme prize, the House refers to them as heroes whose sacrifice for the nation ought to be applauded and recognized. To ensure this happened, the federal legislators mandated the Committee on Defense to liaise with the executive to ensure that posthumous national awards are given to late wing commander Hedima and his colleagues. The House also urged the executive to award scholarships to first degree level to the children of the late Air Force pilot. Pius Samuel. Core TV News, Abuja. 
And why the Nigerian military authorities say troops have pushed out Boko Haram from its final position in Adamawa State. This, they say, follows the recapture of Madagali from insurgents. Defense headquarters revealed this through a Twitter feud on Thursday night. However, did not disclose further details of the military operation in Kajati figure. Until the latest announcement, the authorities had noted that 36 communities had been recovered from Boko Haram in recent weeks. Kaduna Metropolis literally stood still for the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, uh, Muhammad Buhari, as he began the final lap of his campaign rally. Speaking at the well attended Zona Rally at the permanent site of the Kaduna International Trade Fair Complex along Zara Kado Expressway, Buhari said his administration would not condone with selling if given the mandate on March 28. On the issue of past corrupt leaders facing trials in various courts across the country, he pledged to allow the court to decide on those cases. He, however, noted that whoever is indicted of corruption between 1999 and the time of his wearing in will be pardoned. The All Progressive Congress has asked the President Gulag Jonathan's administration to tell Nigerians the course of the ongoing diplomatic row between Nigeria and Morocco that has forced the kingdom to recall its ambassador to Nigeria while portraying Nigeria as a liar. In a statement issued in Lagos on Thursday by its National Publicity Secretary La Mohammed, a party said Jonathan Marx in particular clarified the thorny issue of whether or not they spoke with King Mohammed VI of Morocco. A party urged the Jonathan administration to clarify the issue and save the nation from international embarrassment that has seen the Moroccans branding Nigeria a liar and the Committee of Nations. APC said Nigeria, because of its much acclaimed leadership role in Africa, must not allow such a diplomatic foul to go past without being addressed, saying other countries were keenly watching the row between Nigeria and Morocco. The People's Democratic Party presidential campaign organization has challenged the All Progressive Congress to tell Nigerians whether or not its presidential candidate, Mohamed Buhari, is considering scrapping anti-gay laws and allowing same-sex marriage in order to secure the support of foreign, uh, some foreign countries. Spokesman for the campaign team, Femi Fani Kaudi, said in a statement issued in Abuja that this was more important to Nigerians that the issues raised as a consequence of Morocco's withdrawal of its ambassador from Nigeria. He argued that rather than join hands with the federal government on the conduct of international affairs, the EPC is ready to assume the worst above their government and above their president. Fanny Kaude noted that if the position wants clarification about the Moroccan affair, it ought to go through the appropriate channels or attempt to reach the foreign minister in order to find out what really happened. The PDP campaign spokesman added that instead of talking about the king of Morocco, APC should speak out on his claims that its presidential candidate is considering pushing through legislation that would allow same-sex marriage. 
And now the All-Progressive Congress presidential campaign team has accused President Golok Jonathan of Maslin. The Economic and Financial Commission is claims that under the president's watch, EFCC has been turned into a toothless bulldog with no single high-profile conviction in three years. Spokesman for the APC campaign team Garabashevu made the allegation at a news conference in Abuja. He argued that the situation has ensured that Nigeria remains on Transparency International ranking of corruption countries in the world. If EFCC was set up on the basis of a law formulated by the National Assembly signed by the President of Nigeria, if only it would be allowed to operate without interference in accordance with the law, that would satisfy everyone. Now, the President's option is to do nothing about corruption. What is the alternative? He has no alternative to, to, to corruption being fought using the courts of law. Of course, he hasn't allowed it to function. The FCC is not working. Away from that now, no fewer than two people have been confirmed dead and property worth millions of naira lost after an early morning fire gutted uh, my 12th market in the chauffeur area of Lagos, although the cause of the fire had yet to be ascertained. It was learned that no fewer than 20 shots were consumed by the inferno. General Manager of the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Femi Oke, uh, however, told newsmen that preliminary investigation revealed that the petrol and diesel were stored in the shops. He added that four vehicles, five motorcycles and two trucks were also destroyed. He said fire outbreak occurred around 4.45 a.m. at my 12th market. About 20 shops were completely burnt down. Five motorbikes, one car, three buses and two trucks were also burnt. Lassemabo said the fire was put out at 8 a.m. while recovery operation was ongoing. You're still watching Court TV News at 4. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more stories after this timeout. Stay with us. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. It's Court TV News at 4 live from our Lagos studios. For more information on our news and other programs, like our Facebook page, it's facebook.com forward slash Court TV News. You can also follow at Court TV News NG. And for live streaming now, log on to youtube.com forward slash Court TV. Leave it space and news. President Golok Jonathan has visited the Awujale of Ijebola and Sikiro Adetono in his palace in Ijebu Deto, according to the president, to seek the monarch's blessings for the March 28th presidential elections and his party's bid to take over the Southwest. A correspondent to Olajume Kolatoji has more in this report presented from our studios. In continuation of his re-election campaign and the bid to take over the Southwest and the forthcoming general elections, the president, who has recently paid visit to the influential monarch in Yoruba land, arrived at the palace of the Awujale in company of the PDP leaders in the Southwest. In his welcome address, Awujale of Ijebulan, Sikiru Adetono, charges members of the party and the Nigerian politicians to stop heating up the party ahead of the general elections and added that the unity of the country is more important than the common pools. <laughs> In his reactions to the monarch's address, President Goodluck Jonathan says he is in his palace to seek his blessings for the 28th of March presidential elections. 
He also added he will implement the outcome of the 2014 National Conference and will fulfill all his campaign promises if re-elected. Within these past four years, we have tried as a government, no government can complete all projects within four years here. The educational sector too we have tried across the country. The problem of the federal government is that in Nigeria is a very fast country. I mean, they do so much, but sometimes some parts of the government do not really know what they are doing. But we've done quite well. The road infrastructure, we tried to improve the railways back, we tried to improve our permanent buildings and security environment to the, uh, in our airports. The health sector, we have tried to put the tertiary level of all the food, all the health tourism. Some of our hospitals are now planning for open hospitals for the food transfer. And at the primary health level, we are able to eradicate anyone, and we are the way of eradicating the uh, uh, polio of this country. While the Jebus continue to ask for the creation of an Ijebu state and the president continues his moves for re-election, time will tell if both will reach a mutual agreement to work together to achieve each other's objectives. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission at Tahiru Jega says some political parties and their candidates were hitting up the polity. He went on to say the actions of some candidates for the March 28th and April 11 elections are threats to the conduct of his proposed. Jega speaking during a meeting the commission had with registered political parties at the headquarters of the commission located at Matama district, Abuja. He also uh, said that the postponement of the general elections has afforded the commission the opportunity to further perfect the electoral process. The meeting between Jagara and the political parties was meant to brief the political parties on the level of preparation of INEC with regards to last Saturday's feud text of card readers in 12 states, while he pleaded with Nigerians to contribute to the success of the election. The INEC chairman called on the political parties and their candidates to engage in the electoral process positively. In the emerging technological world, the role of public relations and public relations experts cannot be overemphasized in the build up to reputation and crisis management. And with the forthcoming general elections, Nigerians is focused that the African uh, Public Relations Association has put together uh, a colloquium to look at the role of public relations in nipping in the board incidences of political violence. A correspondent Rashi Rashid has more. Public relations can be said to be as old as man, and from advertorials to news items, press conferences to political and business outings, the role of public relations experts cannot be overemphasized. Being endowed with such enormous influence and responsibility, a special colloquium organized by the Africa Public Relations Association opens up what should be the role of public relations experts, especially during this political season in Nigeria. Professionally, uh, PR people are supposed to create understanding between stakeholders. Um, if you talk about Nigeria as an entity, the stakeholders will be the people and the government. Um, PR people are supposed to create understanding between the government and the people. And the, and the way to do that is to create awareness for the work that government is doing, to try and manage expectations. What PR people do really in part is to manage expectations. The lecture tagged contemporary issues in reputation and crisis management gives Yomi Barijo Kosoya, the Secretary General of APRA, the opportunity to warn public relations experts and politicians to desist from propaganda in protecting the project Nigeria. It takes 20 years to build reputation, but it takes only maybe five minutes to destroy it. Now, what we need to do really is that we need to be truthful to ourselves. We have come to a stage where we think that propaganda is the same thing as reputation building. Uh, when we, we must realize the fact that there's a goal in mind beyond this election. We shouldn't, because of this election, destroy the fabric and essence of the country. Uh, and then we are then trying to patch it together. To Wali Adam Olekun, former Secretary General of the Association, he tasks the government to use public relations to interface with the citizens before election period when they resort to foul means of gaining political attention. The government must relate with the people. You see, unfortunately, in these are crimes, 
people see government only when there's an election coming. So they're not managing issues. They're not talking to them. They don't recognize them. There are problems of no water, no light, um, uh, no, no jobs. People are, you don't start churning out hundreds of thousands of millions of students every year. But there's no work for them to do. Nobody's worried about that. So what do you think will happen during election? The colloquium, which was held in honor of Wali Adamoleko, marking his 60th birthday, drew participants across the globe, including Kenya and the United States. Rashid Rashid, for TV News, Ilaramoke. And our counting of votes is still on at the delegate conference of the Nigerian Labour Congress uh, several hours after voting ended at a reconvened conference. Although the Eagle Square venue of the election is now near empty, a few delegates are patiently waiting out the entire process. Correspondent Basiae, who monitored the process overnight, reports that officials and candidate agents are keenly observing the counting exercise. There is also a lot more security presence at the venue in contrast to the batched elections. Though the Eagle Square venue of the reconvened election is now empty, some of the delegates are waiting now to observe the process. You're still watching Court TV News at 4. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more stories outside Algeria. Stay with us. From time immemorial, women have backed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical, women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as a wife, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Now, sign Nigeria now, the daughter of Russian opposition politician Boris Nemtsov says President Vladimir Putin is politically responsible for her father's death, citing reasons in an interview in Italy with the BBC. Zana Nemtsov says her father was a critic of Putin. They fought with Putin and nobody else. She blames the president for her father's death. The killing of 55-year-old Nemzos, who was shot dead close to the Kremlin in late February, has infuriated the opposition, which hold Putin responsible for his death. Five people have been detained and two of them charged for carrying out the killing, though Nemzos' colleagues worry that whoever ordered his murder may not be found. Well, and that's a wrap on Court TV News at 4. Many thanks for watching. I am Frank Omalape. We'll be back at 5 for Global News. Bye for now.